The most respected guest of the day, Dr. T. Thyagarajan, Dean MIT Campus, Anna University, beloved principal of RMK Engineering College, Dr. K. M. Muhammad Judaith, participants from various organizations across the country, my fellow faculty members, a warm good evening to one and all present here. I am Gita Ramadas, head of the department of Tripoli, RMK Engineering College. Before starting the webinar, now I would like to invite our beloved principal to address the participants. Welcome, you sir, please, sir. Good evening to all. So it's my pleasure to welcome Dr. T. Thyagarajan, Dean MIT Campus, Anna University, for accepting our invitation to conduct this webinar for the benefit of all the faculty members across the country. My dear faculty members, I would like to thank all the faculty members who have joined in this webinar to enrich your knowledge with respect to effective classroom teaching. On behalf of our beloved chairman, sir, members of the management, deans, HODs, faculty members, and students of RMK Engineering College, I wholeheartedly thank and welcome Dr. Thyagarajan, sir, and all the elite participants to this webinar organized by Department of Tripoli. I would like to thank HOD and faculty members of Department of Tripoli for, organi for organizing such a great webinar for the benefit of all the faculty members by a great resource person, Dr. T. Thyagarajan. Hope all of you are fine and safe. And uh, please stay at home and uh, please obey all the norms provided by the government during this lockdown period. My dear participants, we never ever expected this kind of experience in our lifetime. But fortunately or unfortunately, so we have undergoing this very tough situation. And during this period, all the institutions are conducting so many programs for the benefit of their students and faculty members. As a part of this, today, we are very fortunate to have such an eminent person to deliver skill set for effective classroom teaching webinar, online webinar for the benefit of all the faculty members. The overwhelming response by all of you, more than 2,500 participants registered to attend this webinar. So hope you will get benefit out of this webinar by our eminent resource person, Dr. Prajit sir. I would like to inform you or introduce about our institution, RMK Engineering College, which is established in their 1995 by Lakshmi Kantamal Educational Trust. This is our 25th year of excellence in engineering education. Our college is situated at Kavare Petai Kumudipundi Taluk, Thiruvulu district. And our college is managed by Lakshmi Kantamal Educational Trust. And we are at the forefront of engineering education consistently among top 10 engineering colleges across the state. In 2019, our graduate percentage is 89.6 and overall result in 2015 to 19 is 93.82. And from the inception of our institution, our students bagged 955 university ranks, including 23 gold medals. To have strong industry connect and to provide the opportunity for our students to get placement and industry exposure, we have signed 24 MOUs with industries and academic alliance partner. With respect to industry connectivity, so there are 200 plus regular recruiters for our institution and consistently above 85% of annual placement conversion we have been maintaining. In the day one campus of the 2020 batch, totally 816 offers issued by Cognizant, TCS, Wipro, and Infosys to our students. With respect to our management, led by our visionary chairman, founder chairman through R.S. Muniratnam, a dynamic personality, a former member of Tamil Nadu Legislative Assembly, and he's the president of consortium of self-financing professional arts and science colleges in Tamil Nadu. And also is holding the post of chief patron for all India Federation of self-financing technical institutions across the country. 
is honorary advisor for youth welfare and sports development departments appointed by government of tamil nadu and has also received vidya ratna award for his outstanding achievements in the field of education for the rural community our management members respected chairperson madam director sir vice chairperson vice chairman trustee and the secretary our institution got first approval from aict in the year 1995 approved by affiliated to anna university and all the ug departments are accredited by nba and our institution is accredited by nac with a plus grade our institution is also accredited by tata consultancy services with b grade and total sanctioned intake for seven ug programs is 300 3228 with a total faculty of 219 faculty members and we have been maintaining 1 is to 15 faculty student ratio we are offering seven ug programs in civil engineering computer science and engineering electrical and electronics engineering ece e and i mechanical engineering information technology for the academic year 2020-21 so we have planned to start this btech artificial intelligence and data science and btech computer science and business systems subjected to approval by aacte and an university we have three pg programs and six programs are approved by an university research center to conduct phd for the benefit of research scholars there are around 150 faculty members in and out of rmk engineering college pursuing their phd with our supervisors we have applied for autonomous status from an university and ugc starting from the year 2020 21 it is under process with respect to achievements and recognition in the year 2008 we have got the best overall performance award by isde and nar of india ranking 2019 out of 200 shortlisted institutions by mhrd government of india our institution positioned 157th rank and in with respect to cleanliness hygiene and greenery maintenance inside the campus our institution backed the 6th position in the swachhta ranking in the aicte cii survey of best industry linked institute in 2015 we have got for our ece department and in 2018 cac and it and in last year 2019 our mechanical in engineering department has got the best industry linked institute award from aicte cii survey there are 955 ranks since 1999 with including 23 gold medals and the graduate percentage is 96.11 and we have industry collaborative 14 center of excellence laboratories to provide business unit hiring opportunity for our students there are 30 percentage of students out of all the placed students are getting this opportunity to do internship and then they will get job offer from the company and nac has approved our institution to mentor 10 institution and with respect to food safety inside the campus we have got best institutional food safety award by fssai government of tamil nadu we have also organized tedx during 2019 and in 2018 we have organized smart india hackathon identified as on the nodal center out of 28 nodal centers across the country for honorable minister of state for housing and urban affairs sri hardeep singh puri participated in the smart india hackathon 2018 to give away the prizes to the winners and our students team regularly participating in this smart india hackathon starting from 2018 every year two teams won first prize in 2018 and 19 in 2019 one team won first prize in hardware edition also our students team has won the aacte chatra viswakarma award national level third prize given by honorable vice president of india to inculcate entrepreneurship culture among the students we have msme incubator isel approved by edi anna university and we have mhrd sponsored four star institute innovation council functioning in our institution with four star rating we have adopted five villages in and around our institution under unnat bharat abhiyan 2.0 scheme by mhrd government of india so top magazines ranked our institution in the top 150 and top 30 across south india and across india data quest in the top t school survey 2020 across south india our rank is 10th position and across the country 13th rank 
for private engineering institutions and uh, including government so we got 22nd rank by data quest the week hansa research survey in the 2017 we have got 26th rank in south india similarly for, from india today outlook and career 360 so we have got the top 100 positions so industry collaborative co laboratories in the areas of artificial intelligence cyber security big data analytics cloud computing front end engineering telecom embedded system automotive electronics and factory automation building management systems product life cycle management automotive warranty and concrete and farm work in collaboration with cognizant tcs virtusha salesforce hitachi solutions wipro kpit technologies pune mitsubishi electric india johnson controls india pune and we have lnt construction collaborative concrete and farm works laboratory for the benefit of civil engineering department students so structured placement training programs have been conducted for the benefit of all the students of our institution starting from first year to final year starting from refresher training campus readiness ice breaking session communication skills improvement engineering orientation design thinking placement readiness and also personality development in the 2020 20 batch we have achieved 88 percentage of placement as on march second week the number of companies visited 139 and uh, our students got the higher salary package offers from the industry amazon company amazon there are two students who uh, got 28 lakhs per annum package and one student with 17.5 lakhs and two students with 14 lakhs per annum with respect to alumni association we have alumni chapters across the country and also outside the country last year our honorable chairman inaugurated our usa alumni chapter he has conducted alumni meeting in five different places san francisco los angeles atlanta washington dc and new york around 500 alumni have attended with their family members and felicitated our chairman and we have e cell for inculcating entrepreneurship among the students every year 5 to 10 percentage of students are becoming entrepreneurs so far for the past 3 years we have filed 27 patents and we have center for higher education and 15 to 20 percentage of students are joining in reputed institutions for pursuing their higher studies in india and abroad apart from this we have center for foreign languages to provide japanese language training program last year 150 students have got offer from japanese companies center for ipr and patents center for online learning center for faculty development we have a very strong computer center with 1080 computers including latest configuration systems and enough bandwidth and we have library facilities health center transport and also sports facilities and hostel facilities for boys and girls and general amenities like parents waiting hall post box post post office bank atm facility inside the campus effluent treatment plant for gardening and also to provide purified water ro plant facilities are also available our group institution consisting of uh, three engineering colleges including our rmk engineering college rmd engineering college rmk college of engineering and technology and our management under our management sri durga devi polytechnic college and four schools rmk matriculation school rmk residential school rmk senior secondary school and rmk parasala one is situated at tirver kadu near chennai thank you for the given opportunity once again i thank and welcome all the participants and also our eminent resource person dr chagrajan sir i also thank uh, dr kida ramadas madam for organizing such a wonderful event for the benefit of all the faculty members thank you thank you for providing the opportunity thank you sir uh, now with the permission of all the participants i would like to take 5 to 7 minutes for giving a brief introduction about my department So welcome to the department, Dr. Pli. We started in the year 1995. Our department is accredited in the year 2002 with five years of accreditation. Re-accredited for five years in 2009. Accredited based on outcome-based system in 
2017 and renewed the accreditation in 2020 with validity up to 2023. We started our PG program in 2005 and we are recognized by Anna University as a research center for doctoral program. 15 scholars completed their PhD as of now and 29 are pursuing their PhD. We also started Center of Excellence in Automotive Electronics in association with uh, KPIT in the year 2016. And as of now, we have three COEs and five facilities supported by Mitsubishi Electric, Vipro, KPIT and Bosch. Our department participates in the AACT CII survey uh, linked to the Technical Institute every year. And for the past three years, we are in the platinum category. We are actively participating in institutional engineers activities and our department as well as our children's chapter win awards every year as best division award or best engineering knowledge student chapter award, best student award, best project award, etc. Every year we are bagging more number of awards and we are one of the foreigners of uh, uh, institution of engineers activity in the Tamil Nadu chapter. We are also doing good in with regard to university ranks, received two gold medals in UG program and three gold medals in PG program since inception. And we have filed two patents out of which two are waiting for the final hearing because of the COVID-19 etc. issues. It is postponed to the month of June through teleconferencing. We have received funding to the tune of 32 lakhs during the past two years, published 82 papers with the highest H index of 56 and 316 citations. Minimum of 85% of all the students for the past many years are getting campus placement in both core as well as hardware, software industries. Also placement is happening through competitions conducted by KPIT, LNT, Arthur Energy, etc. We are also having good, uh, we are also taking good initiative with regard to R&D activities. The recent activities are, uh, we have taken up consultancy projects with nearby industries and almost every year we generate four, 4 lakhs per annum and for the past three years we have generated 12 lakhs and with regard to the funded projects, uh, Nibi, from Nibi one project is completed, UBA Unnath Bharat Abhiyan two projects are completed, again IEI one project completed, similarly for IEDC we have received 10 lakhs for establishing a startup from NST, uh, EDB, DST. And Boardbox is also ongoing. And we have submitted five proposals worth 65 lakhs to various uh, funding agencies like MNRA, DST, and NRDC during the last two months. The centers of excellence that we have established are one is with Wipro technologies in the field of embedded systems. The other is with HCL technologies, again for embedded training. Then with Mitsubishi Electric in factory automation. Bosch Limited for giving training in automotive electronics. And for KPIT for placement as well as training for autom automotive sector in electronics division. Our faculty are actively participating in various activities organized by ASTE, IE, as well as other agencies. And uh, recently, we received, one of our faculty received Lifetime Achievement Award from ISTE, Best Faculty Award from IE, as well as Best Research Leadership Award from International Innovation, Betterment, and Excellence in Research Activities in the field of power electronics. And we, our student, we motivate our students to participate in various competitions and they bring laurels both to the department as well as to their family by way of winning so many awards and cash prizes. Recent awards are uh, first place in Cognizant Big Idea, Big Idea Contest. Then as I said earlier, 10 lakhs for starting a startup, uh, medal at instruments in our campus with the funding from IEDC and STADB in, uh, in 2019, it is ongoing, it is not yet completed. Then ICT Academy Student Innovator Award, Best Startup Award by CII, IAM Bangalore. Then uh, recently in the month of February, uh, there was a competition, Formula Green 2020, in which our students participated for the competition. And uh, because of some technical snag and because the replacement was not available immediately, they couldn't go up to the first position. Otherwise, they got a lot of laurels as well as offers from various agencies who have come for uh, witnessing this event. 
similarly so many awards uh, cv raman award lc best engineer award best innovation award best idea award from iit guwahati best paper award uh, etc and uh, again our students are always uh, passionate towards automotive electronics and auto hybrid electric vehicle every year they participate we started from 15 16 with prizes in the best innovation category and then thereafter we started pursuing further uh, modifications and recently we participated in the formula green and uh, next year also we have registered for further competition and with this I, I would like to uh, express my sincere gratitude to all the participants who have joined in spite of all the uh, heavy uh, assignments i i wish everybody a wonderful uh, webinar session and now i move on to uh, introducing the guest of the day a very eminent speaker very eminent professor i don't think he needs a special introduction still it is my privilege to introduce our guest of the day dr t tyagarajan uh, he completed his phd in intelligent control from anna university good evening sir uh, make it very brief yeah good evening i i don't know we what what to miss out everything is very uh, everybody should be informed because just all very prestigious awards so i will make it so he completed his phd first doctoral from taiwan national taiwan university which is one among the top 10 universities under qs bricks ranking and he is a very established person in the field of auto tuning he was a chief of instrumentation engineering department for 6 years and during his tenure he established facilities for three crores secured mba for 5 years for both ug and pg and recognitions offered for phd under qip he served as director of library and university library for 3 years and established facilities for three crores secured two awards from ieee and springer two times for maximum usage of it resources he also served as anna university nac coordinator and played a significant role to secure 3.46 out of 4 highest among all the state universities in tamil nadu during the year 2014 he also served as director of center for industry university industry collaboration and facilitated campus placement for more than 14000 students generated revenue worth rupees 5 crore secured seed award for the best industry institution interaction for the two consecutive years he also served as director at qac and played an active role in securing the fourth rank in nir of 2018 under university category and also to submit a proposal for institution of eminence for rupees 1000 crore grants and i think uh, today we are seeing anna university as one of the institutions of eminence recognized by government of india and sir's contribution is really uh, commendable congratulations to sir on behalf of rmk uh, he took charge as dean of mit in the year 3rd of 3rd uh, december of 2018 and played a significant role in getting ugc ups status with a funding of rupees 22 crore from anna university he is an erudite professor and a socially conscious researcher he has published over 105 papers authored three textbooks and guided 14 phd scholars secured uh, and coordinated r&d funding worth 13.4 crores and from acte dst tech cube and ugc he has made technical visit to usa uk spain italy and all south asian countries he has received 12 awards one is tamil nadu state dte award for guiding the best pe project ishit kumar award from ice for publishing best paper and two best paper awards in ieee international conferences best teacher award in iea Shri Rajiv Gandhi Gold Medal Award from GEPRF for outstanding contribution in education and research. 
Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam Award from MRD Lab for Scientific Excellence, Best Industry Institute Coordination Award from SEED, and four certificates of appreciation from IEEE. And he was the youngest chairman of IEEE Madras section, as every one of us know. He was covering Tamil Nadu and Pondicherry states for two consecutive years during 2010 and 11, and is the founder chairman for IEEE Control System Society. During his tenure, he, the section received distinguished large sector award from Region 10, first of its kind in the 25 years of its existence. He is a senior member of IEEE USA, SAE USA, SSI, IE Institution of Engineers India, and ISD. He is married to uh, Srimadhi Meera, working in Central Bank of India, and has a daughter working in Amazon USA. So with this, I would like to invite our guest erudite speaker on this evening uh, to share his valuable ideas with all the teaching fraternity across the country. Thank you, sir. We are very lucky and gifted to have you as the resource person today, sir. So on, a, on behalf of all the participants, uh, I would like to welcome you and the floor is now yours, sir. Thank you, thank you. So friends, uh, our Professor Junaid uh, very nicely highlighted uh, the accomplishments of a 25 years old RMK group of institution. And Professor Gita also very nicely projected the departments, uh, EEE department activities, very interesting. And uh, uh, I requested her to edit the biodata she took a longer time to uh, introduce. Anyway, thanks for your kind words. Friends, so now the time is uh, around 4.45. So when you start a class, uh, usually we say, students, today, uh, now the time is uh, 4.45, maybe for about 40 minutes, we'll have a lecture followed by 15 minutes interaction. So students will be very happy. So same is the case now when you are going to listen to my lecture. If I say 4.45, I will have the lecture for about one and a half hour means all of you will switch off your uh, connectivity. So we'll have for about 40 minutes. Just uh, uh, share my thoughts about uh, the classroom teaching, share my experience in this field. Uh, I'm there for more than three decades. So I will share my experience. I'm sure you will have a a lively, interesting session. So friends, now the share screen. Uh, we have the PPT, share it, go to slideshow, slideshow from the beginning, okay. I have only around 13 slides. So you need not worry uh, that this guy is going to who bombard us with so much of idea. The title is very interesting. Skill set for effective classroom teaching. Classroom teaching is really a challenging task. People, uh, when you join the teaching line, they will say, uh, you, have, uh, you have summer vacation for two months, winter vacation one month, you have earned leave, you have uh, casual leave, you have medical leave. If, if a tufan is coming, you will have leave. If somebody does a bund, you will have leave. All that they say, but let them handle a class, how challenging it is for a teacher to deliver a, a effective classroom lecture. Friends, who is a teacher? That's a very interesting, uh, interesting uh, question. Who is a teacher? I have something I have written. In the bottom here, Mr. F.M. Britos, keep it as a suspense. Maybe at the end of the lecture, you will know what he said. Friends, uh, I was enthused in this uh, uh, type of uh, pedagogy lectures by my mentor, Professor Yes Sadiq, the former Vice Chancellor of the University, University of Madras. When, uh, in, uh, when uh, 
gentleman or a lady takes up a teaching as a profession, wants to join an elementary school or a high school, you have a formal kind of training, B.Ed. is there, M.Ed. is there. Same if we want to take up a teaching post in a engineering colleges or universities, we don't have any such a mandatory requirement of B.Ed. or M.Ed. Fortunately or unfortunately, the HOD will wait for a newcomer to give a tough subject when he is coming. Like in cricket also, if you see any new newcomer in the team, his fielding position will be in the forward shot leg. The batsman will be like this. When he hits with the bat, most forcibly he will be hit when he is in the forward shot leg. So similarly, HOD also what he does, uh, or this subject you put X. Whoever X comes, irrespective of his PG or UG expertise, that subject will be allotted. So where is the exposure for a young teacher to get trained? There are opportunities like uh, uh, national technical teachers training, then UGC Academy Staff College, but uh, the number is very less compared to the number of faculty members that are available in uh, technical institutions. So in a webinar like this, will definitely cater to the needs. Linda Gardman, you might have heard, she has a, she is a lady, she has written a book on Zodiac. Zodiac means like uh, uh, you have Libran, you have Pisces, you have Aries, cancer, like that, you have different kinds of uh, zodiac. If a person is born in one particular zodiac, he has this particular characteristics. For example, oxygen is a combustible gas. Copper is a conductor. Like that, a person who is born in a particular zodiac, he has certain specific characters. Whether, whether you like it or not, in the teaching profession, if you enter, whether you are a cancer, whether you are a any zodiac you belong to, one need to have specific characteristics. You look at the characteristics. The first and foremost thing is uh, resource. You must be resourceful in the knowledge sharing, competent enough to deliver good communication skills, passionate about teaching. Enthusiastic, inspiring the students, have patience when the students bombard a lot of questions, have tolerance, must be fair and unbiased, whether it is a girl student or boy student, if the student is from our own village, our own community, our own state, there should be, there should not be any bias, must be fair and unbiased. Follow the professional ethics scrupulously. Adapt to the change. The same kind of lecture I delivered in the RMK Engineering College by traveling all the way in a seminar hall sitting around 100 people. But today the lecture is through webinar. I must adapt to the change. That's the important characteristics of a good teacher. He should evolve his own methods to make the teaching learning process uh, more effective. Creative way of delivering the lecture. Traveling in an unexplored path, undefined path, but still make the teaching learning process more effective. I must also be caring towards students. I must be considerate towards the students. I must be accessible to the students. Class I need not uh, disappear. I, need, I, I, I must be accessible to the students to clarify their doubts on a given working day. I must be helpful. I must be a facilitator. I must be supportive in the teaching learning process. Look at, look at the characteristics in the world. If you want to define a good teacher, all the characteristics were pumped in. But I say, I'm born in uh, Libran. 
I am very, very serious man, introvert man. I cannot get along with people. I am born in a particular zodiac. I am a short-tempered man. That will not help us. In a teaching line, if I take it a noble profession, there are certain essential characteristics for a teacher. Some of them I have listed here. So how do we, how do we inculcate that in ourselves? A webinar of this type, once in a way, makes us conscious effort to see that I, I, I inculcate this kind of characters among my, uh, under me to make teaching learning process more effective. Look at this mannerism, dressing. There is no dress code like you must wear this kind of dress or tie or coat. It's not like that, but a decent and dignified presentable dress. Comparatively, instead of a serious face, a cheerful and smiling, cheerful, smiling, presentable. When a question is posed, when a doubt is raised, I must be polite in answering to the clarifications. I must be cool and calm while dealing with uh, different kinds of students. There are heterogeneous students. I cannot lose my cool in front of a student in the classroom. When I'm delivering my lecture, I must be confident the students should get a feeling that I'm going to satisfy his needs in terms of all his technical clarifications. The lecture delivery should be very effective and masterly. So all this, we must make very conscious efforts to see that the, our lecture is uh, interesting, effective during the classroom. Friends, most important thing is when I start the class, I'm, I'm focusing more on classroom teaching. I have 50 minutes of time, so how do you do that? The first and foremost thing what I do is, in a, in a day you have seven hours of class, seven different subjects in the timetable. Every teacher comes and once his time is over, uh, we get in. The moment you get in, you cannot expect the student to start listening to us. It's practically impossible. So I need to make certain conscious effort to get the attention of the students towards my topic. So I must first make the objective very clear by writing the topic, uh, uh, topic in a bold letter. This is what I'm going to cover. For example, I'm a bit actually, for example, uh, a DC motor construction and principle of operation. So when we write the topic clear, the, uh, the students, uh, they tune their mind that I'm going to deliver this. Then I put some subtopics on the left-hand side, principle of operation. Then we talk about the parts, different parts, and uh, the material that is used, and the role of that each part in the working of the DC motor. At the same time, if I have covered certain topic in the previous class, use the blackboard on the right side. You can review, this is what I have covered in the last class. You can even ask few questions, one or two questions about what has been covered in the previous class. While asking the question, we should also be a facilitator. You try to fac facilitate, you try to get the answer from them. We must create some kind of interest by explaining the importance of this topic. That should trigger some kind of inquisitiveness. This we call it a setting induction. That's a very important aspect uh, before we start the class. You may ask one question, you are only 50 minutes. How do we do spend time this? As we get the experience, uh, we know how to pace our presentation. Friends, after this setting induction, I, I throw some tips for you on effective class. Even if you have handled the same subject 
for uh, uh, two or three semesters. Still, we have to spend the quality time to organize the lecture. Interestingly, out of our enthusiasm, uh, what I, I do is I extend my lecture beyond the uh, hours that is allotted. That's, that, is, that is not fair. I must start on time and I must also stop on time. Starting on time is important. At the same time, stopping on time is also important. Friends, another interesting point. Never start fast and end slowly. Never start fast and end slowly. Colloquial Cholopona, Namak Sarakilla, Tindirche, Pilgra, Vadare, no Patanusar class is dragging. So never start fast and end slowly. Similarly, never start slowly, giving more weightage for introduction, more stories, more anecdotes. Finally, when the actual principle, actual concept comes, I push the topic because time is short. That's also not okay. That's why I say I must organize my lectures. How much time I give for this? Approximately. How much time I give for this topic, this subtopic? So that's very important. Start on time, stop on time. Never start fast and end slowly. Students may think that you are exhausted of the topic. Never start slowly and end fastly. You are exhausting the students. Organize your lecture. Do not memorize. The lecture should be spontaneous. You can have some tips and based on that, we start delivering the lecture. So we, we cannot expect the students to understand what we did not. What I mean by that is, uh, I used to handle the control engineering. Very passionately, I, I handled that subject. So for example, signal flow graph or block diagram reduction. So I take the book, uh, usually we follow Nagarat Gopal. So we, we do the problems. Very happily, I take the, I take the problem that is a uh, solved uh, inside uh, example and uh, explain that in the classroom. So when I give an assignment, I simply give the assignment based on the problems given at the end as an exercise problem. Coolly, I, I, I just uh, make an attempt, I never make an attempt to solve those exercise problems, simply push them as an assignment for the students. Is that fair on my part? I still remember in the third unit that the time domain analysis, there is a derivation for uh, finding the equation C of T for a second order underdamped uh, system, find out C of T. In that book, uh, it's uh, authored by a very renowned professor. He, uh, he assumes that uh, this simplification is not necessary for the students, they can know by themselves. I also try to follow it even for four or five years. I simply write after simplification and jump it and write that equation. After a few years, when I just started out of inquisitiveness, I, I, I started exploring what is this after simplification? Can we simplify? Ladies and gentlemen, you trust me, I could not break that. And some Laplace inverse this, that. Then I approached a maths professor, maths colleague. Then he started explaining, you don't believe it went for about one and a half pages of derivation, one and a half to two pages, where in the textbook it says after simplification. So that's what I wanted to tell, share my friends. We do not expect the students to understand what you don't. That's not fair. Friends, another interesting uh, you know, tips for classroom teaching. We need to avoid the monotony. Yeah, otherwise it's boring. So how do we do that? First and foremost thing is, uh, I do not, I should not stick at one place and start delivering the lecture. I must move around. I use my posture, gesture. Here is an important point. 
give you a pause. In your lecture, see that your vocabulary fluency does not matter. You should make the presentation as simple as possible for the student to understand. There are two things there. The students have to understand the language what you are using. The student has to understand the concept that is inside the subject. So one need to use a very simplified language. So when we were youngsters, uh, especially in a combined class with the co-education, we put all the stuff with a tie and bombard with uh, our own language. Whenever gaseous substances react, they do so in which pair a simple numerical ratio to one another and to the gaseous product of the reaction, if any, provided all the volumes are made at same temperature and pressure. So kind of style, some vocabulary, fluency, ticks and accent. At the end of the day, it, it, it is not entering the minds of the students. Friends, there is a saying, anybody can make sophistication but it needs a genius to make simplification. I must become a genius to simplify the concept so that the teaching learning process is very, very effective. When a student asks a question, if I do not know the answer, I must have the courage to tell that, yes, it's a good question. I will get back to you. During that process, don't say, I'll get back to you tomorrow. You will not be able to get the answer within a day. You say, I'll get back to you soon. Maybe the next week, you go to the same question, what is asked by the student and try to clarify, you are the most popular teacher in the college. You have to encourage the clarifications. Questions are raised by the mother, you should encourage. What I mean by that is, when we switch over from one topic to another topic, you can always say, am I clear? Do you have a question? While asking that question, we should not say, any question? Opening my eyes and showing my finger, if you ask a question, you will be gone in your lab. So we cannot have that kind of gestures. Do you have any question? When you, when you ask that question and look around the classroom, 180 degrees, you see a particular guy has some, in his facial expression, he has a question. So don't ask him to get up, he feels ashamed. So when you are going around in the class, when the students are, are writing, uh, uh, copying down in the board what is written, during that process, you can go around and uh, sit with the student and clarify with the help of uh, what he has written on the notebook. So you have to encourage clarifications. Just one minute, my air condition is a bit high. Okay. And then we should also spend our quality time to give guidance and counseling. We cannot say it is out of syllabus. It's not there in my timetable. I cannot say that. While clarifying the doubt, uh, we can always use even the local language where the student is comfortable to clarify the doubts. This is uh, some, uh, some of the tips I wanted to share, friends. Now you have some more. Most of the time what I do while switching over from one topic to another topic, I look at the front bench and ask them, is it clear? And those three students, front bench, you know, they are uh, intelligent guys. They simply say, yes, sir. I assume that the entire 60 students have understood my lecture. I move to the next, uh, next topic. So that is not fair. Even when, they, when you want to ask a question, even a 60 students class, sometimes you may not be able to remember the names, but still we cannot call uh, the students as, you yourself with specs, will you please get up? Yourself with a beard, can you, can you get up? Yeah, yourself, blue shirt, blue shirt yourself. So I think we cannot use that kind of uh, approach. We have to treat the students with respect. If you want to uh, express your anger, we cannot do that inside the classroom. That's very important. Friends, this body language is very important in delivering the lecture. Those who watch cricket, you can see 
how the body language uh, plays a major role in uh, uh, winning and losing a game. So body language tells uh, uh, our confidence level, our subject expertise, our movement of limbs, our eye contact, most important, I must look at the people and talk, deliver the lecture, not by looking at, at the ceiling or at the front wall. I must look at the students. I must look at 180 degrees, not only one particular bench. Eye contact is very important. While, while you are delivering the lecture, you must deliberately give some kind of pause, especially that is called a non-verbal communication is there. When you are seriously discussing a topic, you, see, you hear some students are uh, making some kind of murmur. I cannot stop and uh, shout at the students. Those days have gone. So non-verbal communication, deliberately you pause your presentation. Then the murmur of the students heard by entire class. The student gets ashamed and he stops that. That is nonverbal communication. Pacing the presentation. What is meant by pacing the presentation? So most of you have seen the one day international games. During the one day international, uh, especially within three hours, you have to deliver 50 overs. If it is not there, fine is uh, 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 given for the captain. If, if he repeats that, sometimes he is also banned for the next match. That's the kind of seriousness if you don't deliver the overs within the three hours. So during that process, during the field arrangements, they literally run from this end to that end, fielding arrangements. So pacing the presentation. You would have organized your lecture for uh, this topic some 10 minutes, this topic some 20 minutes, this topic for 10 minutes. In the process, a student has uh, raised a question and you have spent more time to clarify. Then how do we pace our presentation? That's very important. And friends, voice modulation. Most of the time, when you say, here is an important point, if you tell loudly, they don't listen. Deliberately, you reduce the voice. Here is an important point for you, exam point of view. Then the students will be more attentive. This kind of voice modulation, pausing, pacing the presentation, nonverbal communication, movement of limbs, gestures, postures, eye contact, body language. All these are very, very important in delivering a lecture, ladies and gentlemen. In none of our B.Tech curriculum or M.Tech curriculum, uh, PhD curriculum, postdoctoral work, there is a subject for this one, friends. We have to make conscious efforts. That's why in the teaching learning process, they call it a micro teaching. The young teacher is asked to deliver the lecture. It is video recorded and played. The student himself, the faculty himself will say, comment on the video recording for about 10 minutes about my voice modulation, audibility of the voice, movement of gestures, postures, the blackboard handwriting, all that will make uh, by viewing the video and then take a corrective action. Again, you remember in the beginning, I told you, Linda Gottman says, if you are born in the zodiac, this is the essential character, inherent character of you. But for a teaching profession, you need to develop a particular kind of character. So we have to make, again, conscious efforts to see that we practice this. Friends, another interesting uh, tips for you. They, they uh, supplement the lectures with the e-resources through WhatsApp or the email. If possible, give some hands-on experience uh, with the software packages like, uh, for example, MATLAB, for example, uh, LabVIEW, for example, PSPICE, for example, uh, uh, our Code Composer Studio, or Xilinx. Depending upon the subject you teach, uh, you can always uh, solve the numerical examples with the uh, simulation packages. That will be more interesting. Give some tutorials and assignments. Especially when we are giving assignments, we should give the answers for that questions. Then only the students will have interest to 
do that assignments. I still remember Professor Abdullah Khan, who is no more. He spends quality time to give assignments. Uh, uh, more than two to three hours, he will sit in the class in his staff room, prepares uh, the answers for the uh, assignments, and then only gives the assignment. That's the kind of passion time one has to spend, friends. Also, we should bring the practical applications of the topics we cover. That will create more interest for the students to listen to our lectures. Newspaper, especially uh, local dailies like Hindu or Indian Express or Times of India, education column or science, science and technology column, always there will be some uh, latest development. So if you can connect that during your lecture, your lecture will be much more interesting. We can also bring some uh, analogy relevant to the topic you are covering. I still remember uh, the analogy given uh, for this uh, uh, voltaic cell. This Galvani and his wife, they were working on some experiment. Galvani's wife brought a frog dipped in a chloroform while she was carrying that, the frog fell down. When she wanted to lift that frog, the frog suddenly jumped. She was screaming. She didn't know what is the answer. Even Galvani, Galvani did not find out the answer. One fine day, uh, Mr. Walter came to their house and Galvani's wife was explaining what exactly has happened. Then Walter tried to figure out what he said. Slowly, he, came, he found out when the frog dipped with the chloroform was taken by Mrs. Galvani, it has fallen down. It has, during that process, it has fallen on two different metal plates. So when the frog dipped in the chloroform has fallen on two different metal plates, these two metal plates acted like uh, electrodes and the, and the chloroform dipped uh, um, uh, frog acted like an electrolyte and these two acted as electrodes. So there was a current passing through it. Because of that current, the frog jumped. So that's how I connect the electrovoltaic cell. The students all will very carefully listen to the story. Then slowly you push the subject. Professor Junior, you want to tell something? Time, time is a factor? Okay, okay. Uh, so can you can somebody some of you can uh, tell me whether I'm exceeding the time now if the time is 5 15 so I thought I can have for yes, another, we will tell you, sir, please carry on. yeah I can you, have you please for, carry on sir you please carry on sir. another 15 yes, minutes sir. is okay yes sir yes sir yes. okay okay so that's what a uh, kind of the uh, analogy we can bring it uh, um, uh, for interesting uh, to make the make the uh, <clears throat> lecture interesting. Friends, I will also show one more uh, uh, interesting uh, um, yes. Where is this one? Share screen. Okay. Just one minute. Okay. Okay, new resources now. Okay. Stop. Yes. Okay.
Okay, just a minute, yes. Yeah, screen, yes. Yes. Okay, can you can you see the video? Yes, sir, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Friends, this is a hardly 20, 20 seconds video. I just repeat this one. You have three important takeaways. Please carefully see. Don't see only Savitri's face. You see what is happening inside. Yes. This is first takeaway. To, to reduce my uh, to save my time friends um, I, I will go back to my PPT yes share yeah what I want to tell you friends is how do you make the teaching more effective how do you connect uh, the uh, newspaper clipping or analogy so in the in the in the in the video clipping that uh, that is a picture called the Maya Bajar which was uh, uh, built somewhere in 1957. None of us are born. So the three important takeaways there, the heroine brings a box while she's bringing, it's a, it's a box which is not connected with any wires. When she keeps it on the table and opens it, it resembles like a laptop. After a few seconds, a person, Nageshwara of the hero comes from the other end and then uh, talks to the heroine. Can you not connect this if you are teaching some wireless technology? The box is brought there without any wire. Can you not connect it this as a laptop? Can you not connect the uh, uh, singing of uh, Nageshwara with the heroine as the uh, video conferencing today we are doing through Zoom? This was thought innovatively in the year 1957. So that's where he becomes the winner. Winners don't do different things. They do the things differently. Correct. Winners don't do different things. They do the things differently. Though we talk of slide by slide effective classroom teaching, tip one, tip two, tip hundred, characteristic, all that is okay, one side. At the end of the day, ladies and gentlemen, it is individuals' creativity, individuals' innovation, individuals' passion that brings out a methodology to make the classroom most effective, to make the classroom teaching learning process most effective. One thing I told, bringing an analogy, the Galvani story. Another thing, bring a practical application of the topic you are discussing. Another thing is, bring the uh, newspaper clipping that what the recent trend, what is happening, or some kind of uh, case studies. All this we can do once in a while. Need not do every time because you are going to handle the subject. Whenever you handle the subject, that can be repeated. Friends, next slide. Another, uh, uh, what is this uh, tip is, whenever I prepare well in a class uh, yeah, for the day, I assume that uh, the students all should be attentive right from the moment I enter and till I leave it, which is impossible. In a day, there are seven hours, Already the student has uh, uh, got bombarded with the previous uh, lectures. How we can expect the student to be very attentive right from the moment I enter the class? Never I should assume that 
uh, mine is the only class the students are learning. I should also never laugh at the student, especially in a 60 day, 60 students class. It's embarrassing for them. Instead, I must laugh with them, along with them. I don't laugh at a student. Usually the tendency of a teacher is the moment a student brings a project report or observation book or record book or anything or a journal paper, I first take a reading pen and mark rounds here, question mark here. I never use the word, oh, figure is drawn very nicely. A vector diagram, you have used multiple colors, very good. I never in my life I do that. That is very unfortunate on my part. First, I must learn how to admire, how to appreciate. I go around the classroom, the students are noting down what I have written in the note blackboard in their notes. During the process, a student uh, notebook I saw, they have written very nicely. Then I must, I must take that notebook and tell all the students, oh, here is the student uh, uh, notebook. He has written very nicely, very beautiful. Some student uh, comes very regularly to the class without even a single uh, absent in the first phase. 25 classes out of 25. You can ask the student to get up and say, this guy has not absent even for a single day. Some student is uh, uh, wearing a very good dress. You go near to him and ask, uh, oh, your dress is very good. Then the student say, sir, today is my birthday. You should not simply come out and come back. Oh, today is your birthday. Happy birthday, gentlemen. So that kind of uh, out of syllabus things one has to. It is out of rapport between the student and staff, learner and the taught. The teaching learning process will be more effective. When there is a vacation, enjoy the vacation, man. Don't carry any books from the hostel. Enjoy the vacation. You just tell that you will be the talk of the town throughout. Canteen La Ponala, uh, Professor Junaid is so nice. Uh, in the bus stop, if you say, Professor Junaid is very nice. Book written for Vadan Solitar Power. Principal Arditte, you don't carry the books for home vacation. Enjoy that. Greeting. Hardly you have three major festivals, Diwali, for example, or Ramjan for Christmas. Or you can always enjoy the Diwali man, take care of your uh, uh, crackers while you are firing the crackers, take care of yourself. It's out of syllabus, it's not there in the curriculum, but still I can spend some time. If there is a GRE exam, TOEFL exam, how many of you are writing TOEFL man, next uh, GRE exam, gate exam, next Sunday you have gate exam, six people or 10 people raise hand. Oh, all the best man, well, wish them man, all of you wish them. So I have to do certain things like that. Suddenly some three, uh, three days or one week, one student is absent. Next day he comes uh, with small beard or something. I go near to him and ask him, Inapatabi, what happened to you? Oh, my grandfather expires. Oh, he said, may his soul rest in peace, man. Nala hey, Mr. Sangeet, please help him, man. Give, give your notebook. I will conduct a lab for you, man, don't worry. So that kind of out of syllabus thing, we have to do it. That kind of rapport alone helps us to make the teaching learning process uh, more effective. Friends, uh, this is mnemonics. Most of the time when I teach, uh, it is very interesting for the student. The challenge comes when he wants to reproduce that in the exam. So on the time, well, what I can do is, I prepare some kind of a uh, mnemonic. Till today, we remember WIPGR, even today, we remember all silver teacups. Edward brought home a good Ford car, B.P. Rai of Great Britain. So what we have to do is, for one subject during the summer or winter vacation, when you have time, prepare well and keep it carefully in a old diary. I'm telling you, till retirement, you can use that. We need not prepare for every semester for this one. For a given subject, Prepare. Maybe you, in a, during a 10 years of your service, you may have handled four for some subjects or so. Keep it that. Whenever you are handling the subject, you can, you, you can use that. So that kind of effort you have to do it. There are different kinds of students who have to handle them very carefully. For simple example, 
A student, uh, when you are teaching very serious topic, he will make a silly joke. I cannot uh, lose my temper. I must be carefully handling them. Shy student will be there. He is very silent. I must be very careful. One bookish student is there. He will always say, uh, give assignment, give assignment, give assignment. I cannot keep that far as a benchmark and keep on giving the assignment. I must balance it. A grumbling student, even if I do all the question paper solving, this grumbling student will say, you have not taught this uh, problem, sir. You have not covered this syllabus, sir. So we have to balance with this. Some students, they don't like a direct order from that. You have to submit by tomorrow. Some students, they don't like that. Rebel student. So you must be able to take care of them, friends. So friends, uh, to, to conclude, to, uh, how uh, effective classroom teaching can be, I just summarize here. Motivation, motivating the student to listen to my lecture is very important. That's what you say, set in action. I should spend a couple of minutes before the class reviewing what I have done in the previous class. During the lecture, I should always get a feedback. Am I audible? Am I clear? Do you have a doubt? We can use mnemonics to make the students easily reproduce the, uh, some of the topics during the examination. Blackboard management itself is a very good art. You must make the blackboard into uh, parts and then correctly write the first part here, second part there, third part there. I must also give references which book I'm following. I must interact with the students during the lecture. Make use of the teaching aids, IT enabled teaching aids. If it's an analytical subject, I must conduct tutorial, I must give assignment, I must make the objective clear. At the end of every lecture, I must tell, I must spend a couple of minutes to summarize what I have done. You remember in news bulletin, TV news, to end the news bulletin, the highlights once again. Friends, sometimes the students will listen only this five minutes of summary. We assume that they have listened for 50 minutes. It may not happen. So summarizing the lecture is very important. And friends, finally, the, the saying goes like this. William Ward, he said, mediocre teacher tells, a good teacher explains, a superior teacher demonstrates, a great teacher inspires. I still remember Dr. Abdul Kalam's words when his school teacher took him on the river bed, sea bed, to show how the bird flies, that has created it. Uh, a great impact on him to become a world-class uh, aeronautical engineer. So are we making that kind of effort consciously to inspire the student, uh, inspire the world? That is the role of a teacher, friends. This is what I wanted to share with you. Thank you very much for your patient hearing. Professor uh, Gita, Professor uh, Junaid, if some questions are there, it can be thrown open. Thank you very much, sir. Excellent, yeah. excellent, and very informative session, sir. So I, I have seen a lot of uh, messages in the YouTube uh, also by the participants. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, 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 we will share all the feedback uh, to you also, okay. sir. Consolidated okay. feedback. Very Madam, good. Madam, Madam, question mm. and answers, please uh, post it in this uh, Q and A. Yeah, Madam. Yeah. Interesting questions. If yes. you have, yes, sir. You, you can, can able always. to see, sir. You can able to see that Q and A. What yeah, are well, the methods yes. in effective teaching, sir? Uh, well, they are well, giving only the remarks like uh, appreciations. Questions yes, so they far are well. so many appreciations, sir. Answer, only appreciations are pouring in, literally pouring in. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. okay. Uh, actually, yeah. Uh, if any typical question, interesting question, you find it, you tell me, but I'll answer it. Otherwise, I'll conclude with the one more video. So now only appreciations are pouring, literally pouring in. Okay, okay. So where is stop share this guy? And then uh, I have one more uh, video.
I go here, I just do this. Okay, so yeah, friends, uh, uh, let me conclude with a very beautiful video here. You will enjoy listening to this. Okay, Professor Junaid, you please tell me whether it is audible. Three or not. lessons I'd like to share with you. So this audible, is about sir, yeah, this is about uh, three lessons I'd Madam, like to share Madam with you. Madam Nui, thank India for the popular CEO of Pepsi. Now my three lessons I'd like to share with you. He wants to share three lessons first. Please be a lifelong student. You know, when we are kids, we ask questions like, why is the sky blue? Why is the bird flying so high? But for some reason, as we get older, that curiosity goes away. And if we are happy with the knowledge we have, then we are actually going to atrophy. So please remain a lifelong student. Don't lose that curiosity. Yeah, that's the first lesson. As a teacher, in teaching professor, the most important thing is, I must be a lifelong student. A simple example, when I studied a microprocessor, it was 8080. Later, 8085. Now, this microcomputer, microcontroller. So, the technology changes. I must be a lifelong learning, lifelong student. The second lesson. Second, whatever you do, throw yourself into it. Throw your head, heart, and hands into it. I look at my job not as a job, I look at it as a calling, as a passion. And I don't care about the hours, I don't care about the hardship, because to me everything is a joy. So whatever you do, please look upon it as a calling and a passion, not as a job, not as something temporary. Yeah, the second important lesson is, whatever I, I involve, I must put my head, heart and hand. It must sink. My thinking process, my physical uh, uh, participation and uh, my heart all together should sink. Then the, the outcome will be perfect. And finally, most important, the third point. The third and the most important one, please help others rise. Greatness comes not from a position, but from helping build the future. All of us in positions of power have an obligation to pull others up. You know, as I stand here today, I look at my responsibility not as accepting an honor. I look upon it as accepting a challenge and a responsibility, an obligation to actually make it possible for the people who are younger to come up and achieve levels of greatness so they too can be on the stage sometime in the future. Yeah, that's, so thank you again. And that's, that's one of the motivation for me after losing this much of hair in 30 years of my service. I thought still I can I can share the experience I learned during this teaching learning uh, uh, profession, so that the young teachers will have some takeaways. Some takeaways. This is not like a Bohm's law or Kirchhoff's law or loss of thermodynamics or Newton's law, where strictly you have to follow the tips I have shared, the procedures I I suggested. It's not like that. It's only some kind of thoughts for you to pick up which is relevant and make our the objective is make the teaching learning process more effective let me conclude my lecture by recalling the beautiful words of francis bacon it is not what we eat that makes us strong it is what we digest that makes us strong it's not what we read that makes us knowledgeable. It is what we understand that makes us knowledgeable. It's not what we earn that makes us rich. It's what we save that makes us rich. Finally, friends, it is not what we preach in forums like this that makes a good teacher. It is what we practice that makes a good teacher. Let us practice what we preach. This is what the great Thirukkular Karka Kasadara Karpave Katrapin Nirka Adarkataga. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for patiently listening to my lecture. I profusely thank Sri Muniratnam Garu, Mr. Kishore Garu, and Dr. Junaid.
and especially my pet phd uh, product uh, uh, professor dr geeta ramdas another benchmark hod uh, thanks for the opportunity created to share my thoughts i'm sure the young teachers would have got some takeaways now if you have a specific interesting question raised i can answer a couple of one or two before yes, we wind up in 5 minutes yes madam yes sir yes sir shall i read them sir it is yes, there in yes, the chat yes, box yes yes madam where is the chat box here q and a sir q and a q and a ah q and a is yes yeah, 11, 11 questions sir yeah, there 11 questions sir yeah. what are the methods in effective teaching sir oh my god mariyappan yeah. mr mariyappan i asked the question after listening to my 15 minutes lecture i assumed that what all i delivered have entered their mind but uh, now the question says what are the methods of effective teaching okay effective teaching i i was telling you uh, you have to set induction then only people will listen that's what i told then i also told you use uh, 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 teaching tools teaching aids it enabled teaching aids you can always use it to make the teaching effective participatory kind of uh, teaching learning you can do that then you can also bring some gadgets some models to make the teaching more uh, learning more interesting you can bring the practical aspects newspaper clickings compare the analogy the video clipping i showed the maya bazaar you have to do that kind of some gimmick there is nothing like a special method like uh, om sala ke chapla i was telling we have to evolve i i i told you this one and in fact uh, another question is uh, is this uh, umar rahman uh, okay excellent uh, thank you ma'am uh, who is a brito that's a good question <laughs> i have to answer that friends uh, in the beginning i wrote uh, m r f m brito m r means mr f m is initial brito b r i t t o in fact it means it is the it is the acronym it is the mnemonic i used for uh, uh, for uh, the uh, effective teaching learning process in fact if you say m m for motivation r for review m r f m f for feedback another m for mnemonics m n e m o n i c s mr f m brito b r i t t o s b for blackboard management R for references, I for interaction, T for teaching aid, another T for tutorial, O for objective, S for summary. Brittos. So, Mr. M R F M Brittos. Motivation, review, feedback, mnemonics, blackboard management, references, interaction, teaching aid, tutorials, objective, and summary. Friends. good question who is that asked uh, pratyusha lakshmi thanks uh, pratyusha lakshmi i forgot to uh, more specifically explain that one so that's very interesting there is a ragini manian what are the techniques we can follow to grab attention of the students in the uh, digital teaching that's a good question in the digital teaching you have you get uh, invariably lot of whatsapp videos we have to select certain lots of videos which are relevant and then appropriately connect it to the to the uh, learnings this uh, maya bazar video in yesterday's lecture i connected for uh, something else university industry collaboration lecture today in teaching i have used it for some other wireless technology i said i said uh, 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 laptop i said uh, video conferencing so that's how you can connect it these are some of the things you can make it interesting there is another question shiva permar subramani even though lots of engineering colleges in there still we don't have teaching practice yeah friends uh, we, have, we have to live with the system we cannot make a, 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 a complaint on the system we should explore ways how we can address it one way i told you we can attend this uh, national teacher training institute they conduct the courses and then uh, ugc academic staff college there are several uh, universities they have academic staff college they conduct the orientation program for one month or four weeks aict or uh, five dp courses university of dp courses where they have the component of pedagogy so we have to explore attending that 
or you should attend webinars like that and there is another question is the conventional methodology easy efficient nowadays of course you have to balance it you have to balance it there is no uh, uh, we cannot totally take away from the conventional method you have to balance it you have to balance the technology and the conventional method what are the techniques we can uh, we can follow now to grab the attention of digital teaching i have answered that um, uh, sir can you please guide on when students get admission to first year engineering they are diverse in many ways what as a faculty we wish all students will get equal knowledge but due to diversity how to deal and ensure every student learn on a same platform that's an interesting question the students are a heterogeneous group uh, how do we make everybody learn on the same way same way may not be possible always there is a, a small difference is there our aim should be the delivery the content delivery whether it has reached them or not that is what is our aim as a teacher i must aim at it sometimes we may have to uh, go slow with respect to slow learners go fast with the fast learners or sometimes uh, you must take the help of the uh, 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 fast learners during the tutorial classes so that there will be a balance uh, in uh, in the learning aspects so that's how we can question please is uh, is there a need for a teacher to be writing lesson notes to be vetted by his head every week in the era or now uh, basil king actually uh, when we are a young teacher uh, then definitely we can uh, get the input from a senior teacher whether we are uh, doing properly or not otherwise in, uh, it's like a uh it's like getting the input from the senior teacher in that aspect is fine nothing wrong in even today i when i sub submit a funded project proposal i consult my seniors whether uh, the uh, project proposal is you listen uh, well or not there's nothing wrong in consulting the seniors any other question professor uh, um Mm, so one more question is that 2k yeah. kids are not having the habit of taking books and studying how can we encourage them to do so that is it man or oh, how, how books they are not able to for that matter if you don't mind even we also not we are not going to the library every day live every year library we buy the books because a committee will come they will ask whether you have spent this much money budget or not honestly because we collect some books keep it in our staff room itself and we say ready the same box so the question once again geeta ramdas what is how do we okay kids are not having the habit of taking books and studying how can okay. we encourage them to do so oh that's that's a good question so what my suggestion is we cannot start dictating the notes in detail in a in a higher higher education class we have to we have to trigger we have to trigger the interest that should enable them to go and browse the books standard books that are available so we must give in during the assignment some probing questions so those probing questions uh, can come in the uh, can uh, can be seen in the books uh, which they are following i think i have answered that question okay yeah. few more questions are there yeah i can answer yeah one or one or two questions yeah some sometimes while teaching if we implement some mathematical way to solve they are not able to accept they prefer only to repeat what is in the textbook okay okay uh what is in the textbook means uh, uh if you are going uh, beyond the textbook they are not comfortable yes sir and uh, no, maybe uh, what he went is uh, hmm. tutorial problem solve the problems if that is getting repeated in the class they prefer something like that already um, solved problems in the book if that okay. is getting repeated in the class okay. they can refer book and do instead okay. if some exercise question is given they are not okay. able to they are not interested oh they are not interested i got the point i got the point okay you have to balance that some uh, all not all the students will uh, think alike some students uh, it is a challenging problem for them to do the exercise problem 
they they do the exercise problem they enjoy doing the solving the exercise problems not all the students think alike most of the faculties are forced to cover syllabus only please give idea how to cover beyond syllabus 2 uh beyond the syllabus 2 we can have some uh, uh, additional classes <clears throat> if if the students are really interested some fast learners some uh, enthusiastic students they may have some more interest uh, we can cover beyond the syllabus for those students if that is effective and if that is really giving some kind of a, a edge for those students over the other students then that message will will reach these students also they will follow fall in line to listen to the uh, additional uh, topics that are covered beyond the syllabus we must show uh, visibly the benefit for the students if they are learning topics beyond the syllabus then others will follow it other students will also fall in line sir one more last For question sir uh, last yeah. question yeah professor jit yeah, one from uh, language teacher sir mr uh, paul chandra mohan ji sir do you think uh, chalk and talk method has lost its value in language classes i am a language teacher uh okay okay no it it is not totally lost we definitely we cannot uh, totally replace chalk and talk uh, for certain topics which warrants uh, non chalk and talk we can we can do for example i showed the indira noe video for such kind of things we can uh, definitely chalk and talk will not help but certain topics uh, we need to uh, use a chalk and talk in fact my professor used to tell when you program when you when a figure is to be drawn you should not use your uh, uh, ppt for that you should draw it then only student will know where to start where to end in the examination when he wants to reproduce that figure so like that so for for certain things we cannot uh, avoid uh, we cannot avoid chalk and talk yeah you have to balance it where it is needed to go for it and yes sir yes yeah, i think yeah i think uh, uh, it's we'll almost uh, six o'clock people yes, will be yeah. uh, yes, yes, exhausted yes. before they get exhausted thank uh, you sir thank I you sir thank you very much awesome yeah. sir so the yeah. messages uh, uh, were uh, poured like anything so we have seen so many messages by so many participants thanks for your excellent presentation sir actually as you. usual so yeah. thank you sir and on behalf of once again on behalf of our uh, respected chairman sir vice chairman sir members of the management uh, and all the faculty members and students of rmt group of institutions our uh, very sincere uh, thanks to you sir uh, for uh, this It's wonderful session sir It's my pleasure thank you sir thank you very much sir thank you very much sir thanks and for one, the opportunity one yeah. feedback uh, from the youtube uh, or the participants sir so yeah. can you can you arrange a one week fdp by uh, dr tyagarajan sir yes asked Yes, uh, that, uh, yeah. actually professor junaid there are so many other aspects of pedagogy for example question paper setting yes sir how do we set the question paper using the bloom stacks on a me correct sir then evaluation then student counseling yes sir then teachers responsibility other than teaching yes, laboratory sir. handling correct. outcome based education yes sir accreditation ranking framework there are so many other aspects maybe if i time comes a uh, time uh, yeah, definitely sir uh, definitely okay. we will arrange sir yeah thank you thank you thank madam you thank you madam thank you thank you, thank you. thanks sir bye okay. thank you sir on behalf of all the participants and on behalf of uh, rmk management and principal and all faculty of rmk uh, i take this opportunity to express our gratitude and uh, immense gratitude for making this session so wonderful with so many appreciations pouring in Uh, i think uh, it all these were possible only because of your involvement yes, and your interest yes, yes, sir correct, correct. Your, exactly uh, okay. thank, you so much, sir. thank you so thank much sir thank you so much thank you thank you sir bye, bye. sir thank you bye. sir thank you participants thank you thank you all thank you madam thank you sir thank you so very much